Hello everyone, I am Rod and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Good evening everybody. Today we're going to go over how to do box modeling. Uh, if you are new to box modeling, this is the video for you. If you have done box modeling before, this is not the video for you. This is going to cover some very basic techniques and um, we're going to work on a very simple model which I'm going to be creating the uh, image planes for in just a second. So box modeling is simply uh, a way of modeling from two or more reference planes and eventually mirroring the other half over. Now it's called box modeling because the, it, back in the day it was done with a box but you can actually use a, use a sphere or a, um, a cylinder, it doesn't really matter but the technique is more or less the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new environment here and I'm just going to make my image planes. Uh, I'm going to do 512 by 512, nothing too extravagant. And I'll just say, okay. So with this being 512 by 512, that gives me a 256 by 256 slice here. Um, I'm going to drop in a background just because I forgot to. Let me grab uh, just fill this in with white or whatever. And I'm going to do this as like a dark, I'm actually going to do it as dark gray, actually. So I'm going to do 100, 100, and I'm just going to drop that in. I'm doing a gray because it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Um, but for you, I mean, you can do it on white, it doesn't really matter. I just, I find it's hard to look at if it's just white. And I'm going to split this. I'm going to go to View, come down to Show, and do Grid. I'm going to use my grid lines, and I will then adjust my grid. Um, let's see. Where are where, uh, Preferences, Guides, Grids, and Slices. I'm using an older version of Photoshop, but it should mostly work the same. Um, so guideline every 32 pixels, I'm going to change that to 256, and a subdivision of 1, and that should give me these little dividing line here. So one side will be one part of the character, the other side will be the other side of the character. And when you're doing a, uh, a model sheet for anything, you just want to make sure that they match. I'm going to be doing like a stick figure kind of character. I'm just going to grab a paintbrush. Where, oh, where is my brush here? Change this to black. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. Grab a ellipse here. Um, my shape settings, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, fill pixels is selected. If you're on a newer version of Photoshop, you you should have an actual thing that says fill pixels. I have to hover my mouse over this old one to make sure it's on fill pixels. Which is fine. Make my little shape of my character's head here. And then I'm going to do, for the body, grab a brush, make a little bit of a neck, I'm going to draw a little body. This is going to be like a little stick figure guy. Yay. A little bit of free handing. No big deal. Okay, so this is my stick figure character. And you can see that I have my, the heads here, which is not filled, which drives me crazy. Here's my arms, I have my legs here. And I'm going to draw the other side of the character over here. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that this side lines up with that side. Now I did have the, I have the arms out here doing what's called a T-pose. And a T-pose is going to be ideal for making a character because it will keep the hands away from the body. 
which is easier to model with and when you do rigging for like bones and everything it'll keep the uh, bones from grabbing parts of the torso when they try to animate um, so I'm going to go up to, I have a ruler up here, but I want to make sure that you guys know this. Go to view and go down to show, um, or sorry, go down to rulers and make sure that's checked. With a ruler checked, I can just come up to my bar here and grab and drag down, and this will give me a guideline. You're going to want to have guidelines in your work because they're going to make your life a lot easier. So top and bottom of the head, I'm going to have a guide on my shoulders here and then a guide I'll say if this was like a nice character my shoulders wouldn't be leaning like this they'd be uh, pretty straight I'm gonna do the top of the where the hand would be in this particular case and bottom of the hand um, since I have two odd shaped hands I'll just pick the one that I want the most I'll just go with this one um, base of the torso. If we had a bend in the knees, you would do one at the knees, and then for the feet, we'll do the feet. Okay, so I have the one here. I want to make sure that these line up as precisely as I can make it on the other side. And the reason this is important is, well, you'll see in just a little bit, but this is important because when you go to model, and I'll actually do this on a separate layer so it's easier on me. Um, when you go to model, it's kind of like connecting the dots, and if the dots don't line up, it's going to make life difficult. Now, it doesn't matter if the head is the same um, thickness, but it does matter if it's the same height. So, because the side of a person's head might be thinner than like the front of their face. And then the neck, I'm going to freehand the neck. But I'll come here and I'll say, oh yeah, my neck goes like here. If you see any popping like that, that means your grid snaps are on. I'm just going to turn those off. So view and then uncheck snap. So there's my neck. I'm going to kind of turn this back. So this is the back of the character. And sort of like the butt of the character. And this is sort of the neck. And I'll say it's kind of like a chest kind of part. And that lines up with my torso there. And then for my leg. Let's pretend there's like some bend in the leg. So I'll bring the leg up to there, pretend like we have a knee, maybe it's like the butt, back of the leg here, and then this is it, it bends this way. Not going to be too precise here. This one's just for the fun of practice. And then since I'm using this arm as my reference, that means it connects to the shoulder here. So I will put a little circly thing here to represent where my shoulder is going to connect. I'm not going to worry about this part of the arm on the body. I'm going to draw that part as a separate piece. So we'll pretend it connects here and then it goes all the way down to there. I will erase just a tad So there's my arm, it'll connect here, but that's its length. And there's a side side, sure. Give it a little bit of butt. Why not? With that all made, we will go ahead and save this out and move it into Maya. So go ahead and do a uh, go to file, do save as. And I'm gonna put mine in my game design folder. This is gonna be Simple character reference. I'll save the Photoshop file just so I have it, and then I will save out as. Actually, I could use the. I can just use the Photoshop in Maya, so that's fine. All right, so that completes this part of the video where we just made our reference planes. Uh, in the next part, we're gonna add them into Maya, and then we will start modeling. Okay, make sure you save this out, and I will see you in the next video.